with Dr. Kuyar. Uh, he's here to talk a little bit to us about uh, health tips to prepare yourself for the heat waves. I know today is actually not really that hot, but as I was telling Marlene earlier, you really don't know when to expect the heat here in Belize. Uh, we could step out after the show and literally we'd need an umbrella to, to, to save us from the scorching sun. So um, I don't know if you want to open and tell us a little bit about what you're here to talk to us about. Uh, tell us a little bit first about heat waves. What exactly is a heat wave? Okay, first of all, um, thanks for the invitation as usual. Mm -hmm. I feel blessed in Thank front you. of two lovely women. Um, I'm lucky. Um, and I was just saying off camera that we wonder what type of heat we're going to talk about today. Now, if we're going to talk about the political heat <laughs> or the financial heat that's going around. Or <laughs> anyway, <laughs> make us stick to my lane like we're in Senate. Yeah, always okay. a good idea. Um, heat, temperature, um, <clears throat> how it affects the body. No? Okay. Um, pretty much one of the biggest things I want to bring across quickly is the fact that you don't have to be directly exposed to the sun. To the sun. Mm. Okay, to have heat problems or heat illnesses or heat related mm -hmm. illnesses. No, you could be in a room, no sun to beat you, but you could still suffer from one of the varying degrees of, of heat illnesses. No, yeah. um, of course, being in the sun is a big risk factor, and that is something we have to keep in mind big time. No. I think it goes a lot undiagnosed a lot um, in terms of people suffering from these conditions. Um, especially those who are outside, who are athletes, for example, um, they get a couple cramps and they will not recognize that as a heat problem. Hmm. Okay? And it's one of the earliest signs that trouble can be brewing. Okay? Heat cramps. You got the heat exhaustion, okay, and of course you have the famous heat stroke. Yeah. Okay. They used to call it sunstroke, but again, you don't need the sun to get to a heat stroke. You can mm -hmm. be in a room. Um, and I, I just wanted to jump in there because right. I think, you know, if I could set some backdrop and, and perhaps broaden the conversation a bit, uh, there's a level of adaptability that has to take place, even in the medicine right. uh, field, because where we should be expecting perhaps rainy weather and uh, illnesses associated to that, mm -hmm. we're seeing a prolonged dry season. Right. And in fact, uh, in Europe, they've just faced a, a massive heat wave and uh, the WHO issued a release, or a warning I should say, that this region can be anticipating that much in summer as well. Yeah. Um, so it means that where perhaps physicians may not be anticipating seeing heat-related illnesses, it is something that we should prepare for. What type of tracking mechanisms do we have to be able to know just how many people suffer from heat-related illnesses? Unfortunately, we don't have much going on. No? I mean, like mm -hmm. I said, it's, it's, it's a lot, many times, undiagnosed. No? Yeah. And even on our part, the, heat, the physicians, the nurses, the mm -hmm. healthcare givers. But I think today's point would be good to the general public, not yeah. just to, to be, take precaution and be careful that they are not exposing themselves to any heat related illnesses yeah um in belize we don't have seasons for example mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we like to call this our summer season but is it really our summer season dry weather, dry summer weather season. Or, or wet weather or yeah. i mean but it need around this time the temperatures we experience a little bit more than than yeah. other times of the year no um don't forget humidity okay <coughs> if you add <coughs> heat and a high humidity we have what is called a heat index mm -hmm. And that that way, even more trouble is coming. Which okay. is what makes our 80 degree weather feel like 100. Correct. Correct. So the thing is, I think people don't, we live in the tropics and we always say, well, you know, we're used, used to the to sun. It. We can handle it. Yeah. Um, and we may be experiencing symptom, symptoms of, uh, of exposure of too much heat and not realize exactly. it. Tell me some it, of those it hap symptoms. It happens many times. That's a good point. You tend to see and there's such thing as adaptability, you said it. People who are coming from outside of Belize that within 24 hours they can have real problems. No? Mm -hmm. We are a little bit more tolerant because we are kind of exposed to the heat and the sun more. Mm -hmm. But very simple things. I mentioned the, the cramps, no? feeling crampy, you feel weak, you have a headache, you feel dizzy, you feel like you want to throw up. Those are subtle, those are very small signs that something can be starting mm -hmm. in the heat illnesses um, 
gamma of symptoms, no? headache, dizziness, nauseousness, cramps, just feel tired, okay? Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest thing, I think one of the biggest um, red flags would be was one, one, one form of confusion. Mm. Like people just you know, look, they look dazed, they look out of it, you know, they respond properly, they don't respond slowly. And I've had a couple of patients actually that people, in, they do a lot of camps going around and oh, yeah. where they push them and they push them and oh, and the boys start to complain that they feel crampy and then they start to look weak and oh, like you, know, you, are, you go on like league, yell, you go on weaky, weaky, yeah. you know, push it, push Light it. Weight. And actually I've had trainers aiding to, to hurt people hmm. instead of help them, no? instead of yeah. saying, nothing wrong for telephone. Go sit down under the tree or under the shade and drink your water and recover and yeah. But no, 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 you have to be strong and you have to show that you could sweat and that kind of thing. And, and that's, that's erroneous, no? Mm -hmm. Okay. But what's the danger? What's the danger associated with... Um, you can actually die from a heat stroke, okay? You so can it's actually, literally just as, it's, just as severe as a regular stroke? Well, in, in so many words, yes. You peep there are fatalities from heat stroke. But one of the things I see a lot is kidney damage from, from heat strokes. No? You get so dehydrated, yeah. your, your, your kidneys shut down, you have one condition they call rhabdomyolysis where your muscles start break down and clog up the kidneys. Mm. And that's, that's a serious thing. You know? wow. I've, um, athletes, cyclists for example, we've had people after cross country having um, heat related illnesses, rhabdomyolysis, then you, then you don't hurt already and then you use up the muscles and they, actually you could break down your muscles so much that it could affect your kidneys and go into kidney failure. But yes, people can die from heat strokes. But it goes through stages, like you have early warning symptoms. Yeah. Well, and not then all progress. the time. Most of the, the time, yes. Most yeah. of the time you have that, that gradual onset, no? Mm -hmm. But sometimes it can happen fast. So that's sometimes, uh, that's why it's, it's, it's good for the general public, the lay person to recognize and be aware that um, we have trouble from, from heat, no? By you the time know, they get into the hospital at times, we have to work hard. Yeah. Yeah. They catch I'm, up. From, I'm from the village and um, this may sound totally bizarre, but maybe you guys actually hear this before. Is it a, is it a myth where, you know, old people say, you come out from the sun, no go go show a right away, or you come out at the AC, no go in at the sun right away, you have to give your body time to cool off. Is that something that could That's be a, a good question, or? and it's, I kind of find it hard to, because at the same time, if I would tell you what's the treatment for a heat stroke. Ice water. The ice water. Hmm. Okay, you, you put the in a um, bathtub or something. Because you have literally. to rapidly bring down the temperature. Yeah. First, it was thought that that, that one kill you more than help yeah. you. But so is that a myth? No, that, well then in, in, in pure definition, yes, because you, you actually treat heat strokes with extreme cold. Sorry, okay. really, just made a lie to me. You're a dumb room only common sense things first though. If it ain't in the sun, put it in the shade. Mm -hmm. Okay? Get to a one you rag and you could put it on the head, the, the head, the scalp, the neck. Yeah. Okay. The the chest, then are good areas to start to bring down your temperature, even the growing area, no? Um, so you start to do those things and start to think about maybe taking the person to the nearest health center or something to get further evaluated. But you can start to do a lot yeah. right out there in the um, right out there in the in the in the outside areas, though. No? And also, a key okay. issue here is dehydration. Mm -hmm. And we know, and I know you know as a physician, that for some reason people just love to say, "I don't like water." I can't understand that Or statement. to be flavored <laughs> these days now. Wait, Worse. flavored or not, it's just like people don't consume yeah. enough liquids, especially water, to keep their bodies yeah. hydrated. Yeah. How, I mean, it, this happens whether it's hot or whether it's cold. Talk to us about the importance of being hydrated and signs of dehydration. Yeah, yeah. Two thirds of your body make out of water. Imagine that your hair make out of water, your bones make out of water, all the organs, the, the blood, the everything, water, water, water. So water is a very important element mm -hmm. and we need to get enough of it for the day. Just like Marlene say, you know, I find sometimes office people get dehydrated as, as yep. often as people where, yeah. where they, they're outside. Because you're not in the water. heat and you don't and feel And then all of this whole lot of thing about pretty water and colored water and flavored water, God-given water. Yeah. That's what we need. We don't need no fancy water. 
Okay. Maybe you could have uh, gone eat this cushion. Well, if you don't want to eat sport, you're going to eat electrolyte drink mm -hmm. with it. But stick to your water, you can't go wrong. Because okay. even the air conditioning can dehydrate you many, uh, many if times. you're indoor. Many yeah. times. I, I, I want to really touch that indoor thing because we see it, okay? Like elderly people, okay? Then they lock up. And when you lock up one room, your, your, the temperature actually go up. We don't hear about we don't hear about these incidents where they forget baby in a car, for example. Yeah. You goodness. hear that, thank goodness. But you left somebody lock up in a car one hour. That whole car turn one oven. Yeah. And, then, and then temperature. Babies getting enclosed or locked up in car, that one problem. And older people. Older people and young, young as like maybe below four or people over 65, they lose that, their body not have that capacity for regulate their temperature mm -hmm. properly. So, they know the feel. So they're more vulnerable. Yeah, they know the feel like they excessively. Then temperature they go up, no, but it is. So that that's a problem. You have to be checking on your older folks. Make sure they have the open windows. Maybe one leaf fan. You know, no, not yeah, everybody yeah. need air condition, but just that that um, thing. So and not rely young... not rely on thirst all yeah. the time as a as one measure as one indicator that you are get dehydrated. Sometimes thirst are the last thing we're setting. Um, they say, or it is said that the, the, the color of the urine now are more, yeah. mm -hmm. more better uh, measurement. Uh, uh, how, so how, how do you know if you're getting enough water? The color of your urine. Your what urine. color should it be? Clear. 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 The clearer the better. The clearer the better. Now, with young children, you, you said that the elderly and the young, young. Mm -hmm. are more vulnerable to excessive heat exposure right. um, because they can't regulate their right. body temperature as much. Little children, you have more control. You mm -hmm. could, you know, sit them down. For the elderly, what's your advice in being able to encourage them to get the adequate amount of uh, water that they need, and how much should they be drinking? Well, the standard dose where I tell everybody that eight, eight glasses of water for the mm -hmm. day. They're not like you need for blah, 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 two, three at a time. Yeah. But throughout the day, it's, it's, I think that one, that one fair amount of time for get that amount of water. And you have to be checking on them, like yeah. I said, no? They have these problems for regulate and temperature. Some of them suffer from mental issues like dementia. They, mm -hmm. They're not quite there. They have some who take medic certain medication, contribute more to it. For example, people who take water pills, some people who take some heart pills like the beta blockers, don't know the one where they're even more vulnerable mm -hmm. for, for suffer from heat. Heat illnesses. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about heat rashes though? Because that's a really common yeah, thing yeah. Um, for persons that are, let's say, in, in inside, inside yeah. in the house and it's warm. Is that a, a symptom to something more severe? Not really, not really. It's, it's many times they have to do with the dryness of your skin, so a moisturizer could help. But um, if you don't have any changes in your skin, needs to be to be, um, you have to pay attention to it. So I, I would have said you have to pay attention to every, everything, no? Yeah. And again, I come back to this big point I want to send to the, you don't have to be outside mm -hmm. for how this. You could be in our enclosed room and have heat illnesses, okay? Wow. And if the person outside feeling bad and say, I miss the trainer, the, 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 the practice on sport and I feel tired, okay? Um, put them in the shade and make them drink water. Yeah. Nowadays, they have actually protocols in place that definitely you have to, every hour you have to stop and drink water. So they not, get water breaks? Yeah, water breaks. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, we know see that we got the, 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 the culture, push your moron, push your moron. Yeah, and, for sure. And, 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 and that could be a problem. No? Yeah. So I want to I wanna, I wanna talk very clearly about the different signs so people can know what to look for, whether it's extreme dehydration or a potential heat stroke that is setting on. Yeah. What are you going to feel and how do you address it in the different phases? Yeah, well, I think the common ones are like headaches, dizziness, nausea, that, that sensation that you want, vomit, cramps, um, general weakness. Okay, mm -hmm. um, Those are the things that if the person starts experiencing that, then you see your, your, your break and you say, you know what, we need for stop, we need for cool down, put it in the shade, no? No, always rely on the thirst thing, no? Yeah. You don't have to be like excessively parched and, and, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and, and, and think for the say, I want to drink one gallon of water, no, but those other things, especially the mental things, now you're feeling dizzy, you, you know, feel quite clear, your head feels foggy, then please, a time for make your, your chill. Is yeah. fainting in the sun, um 
or, or, or in the heat the same thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That can you you have to pay attention to that for sure. I've okay. also seen instances where a person would faint away, and the first thing they do is perhaps put a little bit of alcohol under their nose, like they sit up or putting their head between their legs. Are that is that accurate? No, Should they no, be doing no, that? No, no, no. The head between the legs. No, you put them to lie down. You could put the head to one side. One important thing, actually elevate the legs. When you elevate your legs, your blood Rushes. flow from your legs to the rest of your body, more to your brain. Also, flat surface, horizontal, put up the foot one little bit. Yeah. Um, give turn them the head air. To, uh, exactly. You know, when somebody feels that, like 10 people over there. For okay. sure. So, no, no. One, Everybody two, need to give push your head and somebody could stand up for a few feet away and do an e-fanning or something like that with, with a towel or whatever they have then, no? Okay. What about people with uh, the common NCDs that we see, or yeah. people who are on medication? Which ones are more at risk um, for heat-related illnesses? Well, I mentioned them just now, the water pills, no? yeah. people who drink diuretics, whichever type, mm -hmm. people who have heart condition, people who have diabetes, the NCDs, the non-communicable disease. So um, hypertension, hypertension, diabetics. diabetes, that the ones where we're more vulnerable. And the, the very elderly, we have dementia, Alzheimer's and these mm -hmm. things, then, then they lose that capacity to, to, to feel things for themselves. No? Do you think yeah. it's something that we take too lightly? Definitely. And it's all across the board, even us physicians. No? Um, we, we sometimes not, not think about it. Mm -hmm. And, oh, well, he got stress, so he feel bad. So yeah. put her in the car and give her a relaxant. And, mm -hmm. and, and we're not... It's not that many times at the forefront of our minds, no? Yeah. That, um, well, of course, the typical when we, we come from MCC or we come from Marian Jones, and yeah. you no, know, that that would pop up in your mind. But some of us from the office or in closed areas or people working in workshops, um, I we always forget people who are called first responder. You know, they fireman, we got a lot of gears and so. Yeah. Um, definitely run a risk of having themselves. Get into trouble because of these heat, heat thing, no? heat illnesses. Now, usually the recommendation is to keep out of the high heat of the day, which means within pretty much the peak hours of the day, you don't want to be outdoors. Right. But for us, it isn't, it isn't practical because some people have to work outdoors, yes, um, and some people move around by being outdoors, um, whether they're walking or they're riding. What's your? How can you protect yourself if you do have to be outdoors in the peak hours? Use a cap or umbrella, get out of that direct sunlight and take your breaks. I mean, um, five, ten minutes on the wash, well, roof could, could help a lot and keep your water drinking. No? Mm -hmm. um, I remember good um, coming from Orange Walk and cut cane. I tried one day. And you tried cutting cane one, one day. One day. And that was the wedding called Santa Cura, no? I said, better go to school. And that's why you, you cracked down at <laughs> yes. school, right? <laughs> I could but, imagine. But um, these guys, they go out and cook in early in the morning, five, mm -hmm. and by 10, 11, then done for the day. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they're smart enough to yeah, realize, listen, I can't like, cut in big midday and one and two when the, the, the heat is on. So by 11, then done, you see, they, they, they chill out already and don't cut the, the, the quota for that day. Yeah. So, so try to work in earlier hours yeah, or later yeah. hours if you can. Definitely. If you can, yeah. I'm thinking construction workers and, and yeah. you know, the demands of having to put in so many hours to actually get a decent pay. Yeah. It must be really difficult for them. I think the employees will play a role here that they, they have to get their fellows one break, no? A mandatory break even, listen. We are break for 15 minutes at 10.30, but God, I want to get in trouble because you know that, look, you walk around the city and has everybody to break all day. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> right. Of course, they'd yeah, have so to be... How they mix this thing take so long and that tomorrow and do it in a three, three months <laughs> for we for boys, sure. then they want all day break, then they pan, no? So then you hear them a Belizean yeah, thing now, the man they have to take break. break. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get myself in trouble. <laughs> but it, I think you are, get more productivity at the end of the day if you have your people them well hydrated and, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I know you're not a vet, but... Uh, I assume, of course, animals themselves could be affected by heat waves. What would you say in regards to... I think I'm staying a million there. Yeah, I'm staying a million. I have no idea how a cow and represent... Well, I'm thinking dogs, you know. You have your dog outside, you know, the sun, hot, 
I, I, if I wear the Syrian nose, sometimes I get better treatment than you, man. So. <laughs> That's true. That is true. So. I am happily guilty as charged, yeah. but <laughs> we'll move on from that. <laughs> now, um, one, of the, one of the necessary precautions is looking at newborn babies. Um, because different people follow different rules. Some people will not take their children out for the first couple of months after, they're born, after uh, they were born and some move around with their children. How careful should we be with young babies um, in the heat? Very careful, because like I said from the beginning, their capacity to regulate temperature is not there as yet, no? So keep them in the shade, not go forget the inner vehicle. Not even for 15 minutes, you are there with your, with your young baby in our vehicle, and you, oh, I just want to run into the gas station. That 10 minutes could, could mean a lot. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So try to take them with you and not let them enclose in our, in our enclosed vehicle. But I don't see any problem that in the time they used to keep baby in a, in a lock up in a room till 90 days, mm -hmm. okay, and stuff the, the mother with, with yeah, <laughs> cat in the ears. No, those are they, those those have changed. So you, no? can't you can take them out. You can take them out after the first. But then week. we see them too because you know they're, they're covered from. Yeah, yeah I was also thinking that the they yeah. and they're in a prom and. Well, use common like sense, no? If they're the out and these cotton flannel thing, they they will they will be a little bit more heated. So, you know, you catch cold one lot from people who got cold and flu. So instead of they mess with that, make them wash their hand before they touch your picnic. Mm -hmm. Okay, that that are the best way for keep them safe. Yeah. Okay, or if they got one cold, stay away. Yes, you are, yeah. uh, I could show your pictures, but wash your hands and no come wrong here when you got. Then mm -hmm. you are here to be too protective of your baby. Well, <laughs> not wrong with protecting from cold. <laughs> so okay. we we talked about the the dehydration that can happen, the heat uh, cramps are early symptoms, um, the heat exhaustion and the stroke that right. can eventually happen. What exactly happens in the body when one has a heat stroke? The, the amount of fluids, the amount of electrolytes affect your brain function, mm -hmm. okay? So you can actually have brain swelling, okay? Mm. Which is kind of ironic because they talk about libita fluids, but yet you, your brain swell, no? Mm -hmm. But it does happen, which impairs your mental capacity, you get confused and you actually your brain could swell to that point, you could actually die from it, no? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So your brain, and then you said also your kidney could kidney shut down. Kidney is one of the big ones, no? The you could humbug your kidney big time mm -hmm. by getting severely dehydrated and so on. No? We've had a couple cases where people indeed have ended up in dialysis mm. after, one, after one day of trying to prove something, no? So when someone is experiencing um, symptoms of a heat-related illness, you said just move them into the shade. That would be the right. first step. Uh, what else do we need to ensure that we do? Can we give them administer water? Do we just throw water on them? Like I said, you can soak one leaf, wash rag, one leaf, piece of cloth in a cool water, put it on their head, wrong their necks, wrong their chest, mm -hmm. and start if give them water for drink, plain water. Sometimes, though, they can't tolerate it because they are nauseous and they start vomiting and yeah. then that's the time to start to think to move them to, to call the ambulance call or get the them to the hospital. To, to the hospital or a clinic or something. No? Uh, okay. Yeah. And then we, we of course we have to use IVs for rehydration and so forth. Yeah. No? Okay. So the reactions to a regular person is the same for an older person. It affects the brain and the kidney and of course I would assume that it would be a lot more severe for an older person. Yes, yes, definitely. Because then the, the more debilitated they have other conditions, so you have a bigger challenge mm -hmm. with them, no? Okay. How does one prevent this though? I mean, clearly you want to stay hydrated, but I'm still thinking of the people who have to be out in the sun or are not as aware of the symptoms in their body? Um, reviewing this topic last night, using lighter shades color, mm -hmm. that was a good thing. Um, using a hat, um, Long drink your water. To people who are obese, that's another big thing I should mention. No? Oh. Hmm. People who are obese, unfortunately, again, run the risk of having more um, chances of having these problems when, they, when you're big, no? Okay. Why Could is you that? explain that, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's actually really interesting. Mm. Shouldn't I turn around that question and then ask them if going to go research it? No, no, no. no. <laughs> the, the obesity, the fat cells, they also interfere in your heat regulation. No? Mm -hmm. uh, that is as simple as I can put it. Yeah. It gets a little more complex than that, but 
So it takes more for them, their bodies yeah, to cool they, down. They, so. And pregnant women? Pregnant women, um, my mother, two, two, two people there eh, inside of one. So again, they, they were, would have considered more vulnerable and make sure that they drink the water. No? Please make we appreciate water and you know, don't mess with these fancy waters around. No? Mm -hmm. What do you um, use sparkling water? Alcohol, I want thing I need to mention. Yeah. Alcohol worsen things, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh, let's go for some the swim and family thing, and you take your DBS and things that impair your body for regulate your temperature too. So, yeah. alcohol and caffeine. Yeah. Unfortunately, they dehydrate you, yes, right? Yes, caffeine. Yeah. So people should uh, the one way to drink and so more at risk. Yeah. For um for having these heat related illnesses. So if you are having alcohol, you need to ensure that you're having water in between exactly. as well. So the whole idea of beers at the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Is actually I, I more of a risk. I always tell people when I am in the office, I say, I, one of the things you always tell, regardless, I say, make sure you drink a lot of fluids. And then I say, oh, I get in trouble because I never say water. Because mm -hmm. beer are fluids. So yeah. I get in trouble. So I have to be very careful. I say, make sure you drink your water. I stop saying drink fluids because yeah. it can be. How do you normally advise someone who comes into you and, and they admit that they're not drinking enough water? Because we know it's a problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I get that very often, Marilyn. They I said get they that. don't want they to don't go to the water. bathroom as much. They don't, they don't like it. I, that, that one thing I can understand. Well, you know, can like water, okay? Mm -hmm. But you have to try to instill in them the importance of that water, okay? And even if it means going down the stairs to go use the bathroom more frequently, so be it. That yeah. you want to live longer? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it has, mm -hmm. of course, a lot more health benefits than just staying yeah. hydrated. I, I have one little illustration in my office. I write on my desk as I stand up, I have one, one, one fancy water mug, no? So I buck up into it all the time and one well, yeti, the, uh, uh, yeti thing, everything uh, that <laughs> brand no? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. But it, it keeps the water nice and cool, no? Yeah. And that's the way I, I deal with it, no? Yeah. And the same thing, I have the same trouble, you know, we've got a lot of patients, you know, and they bust out of your office and go to the bathroom and come back, but you have to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because, and, and as we said before, and Sabrina was saying, it, it's not just about being hydrated when it's hot. You've got to right. be hydrated all the time. Yeah. What do you have to say in regards to, because I'm thinking as well, um, I think we also spoke about this a little bit before, but I just want to go back to it. Um, when you're, you know, severely being affected by heat, do you drink cold water or room temperature water? Room temperature water is fine. The coolness or the coolness of the water is for the external part, no? Like I said, I honestly here won't tell anybody go soak the, 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 the person in a bathtub of cold water, no? Mm -hmm. it, those are for like more trained people, you could yeah. read. But start with putting the little things around them and get them to the hospital, no? Mm -hmm. But um, you, you could use the cold water. They have some tiny, they got some fancy things at the hospitals, and know, some ice, ice vests, they call them, where you put in the dry ice in them, and mm -hmm. they come in, and you suspect they got something, and want to bring down the, the, um, the temperature, you got yeah. the, 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 the cold vest, them, no? Um, it's important, we never talk about your temperature, your your normal body temperature, temperature. 98.5. I know I'm talking about Celsius, God, I confuse all of it. But <laughs> once you're around 104 Fahrenheit, you're the, you're the look for trouble, no? Yeah. Also, sometimes we get, we, we got, people get confused between fever yeah. and, and hyperthermia, no? Okay, or, or getting hot, no? Fever that are usually for one, as a result of one, one natural infection response to an infection, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? Whilst you don't need an infectious process to make you get your body core temperature go. Mm -hmm. And then we get into quarrel which, which we part to take your temperature best if they're under your armpit or your ears or across your forehead <laughs> or, or your off your backside or <laughs> something like that, no? We <laughs> <laughs> need physicians to figure that one yeah, out. So, <laughs> but if you're at home and you want to check it yourself, where do you best recommend? <laughs> I think your, your, your guide yourself, like, under the armpit is fine. No, no, the, 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 the thing we put thing in there about, not much. Um, yeah. They have the oh, forehead have, ones Yeah, I got the forehead yeah. one. I got only fancy ones you use in your ears. Uh, um, basic temperature things. Now, when is it an emergency situation that you have just a small window of opportunity to get to the hospital? When the person becomes more confused and less responsive. 
okay, mm. when they're mental. And when you say confused, what are you talking about? They don't know who they talk to, they don't know who they, where they're there. You ask them a question and they don't answer back properly. You ask them how old they are and they tell them they live there. The, the Coney Drive, okay? Mm -hmm. then, then are signs that, hey, we need to get this person as soon as possible to the nearest health center, mm -hmm. okay? The mental thing, because um, not even go by how, how, how they, they hot, how mm -hmm. they fat, because mm -hmm. sometimes they touch it, oh, you know, you're not wrong with that, you feel cool. Mm -hmm. But then, bye uh, bye, look, can't answer properly, you know? Yeah. So, so that confusion is definitely that confusion, one of the red, that the mental red flags. alertness or lack of mental alertness big red flag hey mm -hmm. okay is there anything that perhaps we may um mistake like when you talk about this confusion maybe we just start thinking if it's an elderly person maybe it's just signs of alzheimer's or something else well, there are other the things that you a typical stroke no? yeah yeah it could be so just in case just it's always, case, always best to better be safer than sorry no? okay. is there an ad is there an amount of time that it's okay to be outdoors. Is it best to just stay out of the sun when it's very hot, or can that's you difficult to to answer, Marlene, Because, like, for example, people have jobs that do require them mm -hmm. to be outdoors, and you can't tell them to be outdoors. But use common sense, no? Use one hat, use one umbrella, yeah. take your breaks. So if you do have water. to, just make sure you're protected, basically. Correct. So an umbrella yeah. in the sun is a good idea. It's a good idea. Mm. Sun umbrellas are nice, actually. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll have to try to remember to keep one with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other advice you have uh, for people as we continue through the hot summer? Um, I think when I came, I, I was trying to drill the, the idea that you don't know, have to be outside for, mm -hmm. for have these things. Or you yeah. could be in a house and so So, please so always keep your remember area that. ventilated. Yes, open and so forth. No? Mm -hmm. And and no f no feel stupid or feel like one fool if you care some other hospital and suggest that it might have heat exhaustion or heat. Because mm -hmm. um, that enough for we culture. Oh, we used to heat, man. But if you feel or you have any suspicion, better be safer than sorry. Carrying in a hospital, we wouldn't mind watch them a couple of hours, mm -hmm. see how they do and so forth. No? Okay. 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 All right. Well, thank you for this advice, reminding us once again that. Even though we live in the tropics, we are still susceptible to heat-related illnesses. Thank Definitely. you. Thank Drink you. your water. That's what we'll close with. But we're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we'll be talking about vegan substitutions after the break.